tell us a little bit who, for people who aren't familiar with your story, what, is, what happened to you? Basically, my story was uh, after my career, I played NHL Olympic and world champion hockey player. Um, I, felt I fell adrift, and uh, I thought it was okay to party. I thought it was okay to have fun, and I thought it was okay that I had earned my right. And uh, I became addicted to two powders. One was crystal meth, and the other one was snowboarding. And it was a life out of balance. I'd build it up just to practically tear it down. Um, when you were stranded out in the uh, wilderness, it was for eight days, correct? Yeah, it was for eight days. I set some type of world record. I, you know, it was under those freezing conditions at those temperatures. I survived minus 20 to minus 30 degree wind chill factors. And the longest somebody had survived was three, three days. I had survived eight days and dropped 40 pounds. Uh, it became 86 degrees with a body core temperature. And uh, it was after the second night that my feet were just yellow, purple, swollen. I'd ripped the frozen socks off my feet and uh, ripped the skin off of them that I knew that they were gone, but yet they still had to take me out of there. And it, it wasn't and, uh, you know, until five days later that I would be rescued and pulled off. I was titled uh, the Miracle Man by the National Guard who had found me because I had survived for so long. There was a storm that was just up there and it had just dumped 15 feet of fresh champagne powder, which was, you know, what I lived for. Um, you know, I was living a very selfish life, pushing the envelopes until basically the storm turned around and now I had to climb one inch out of hell at a, at a time and it, it stranded me on the mountain inbounds and then with the inability to sit still, being high on meth from the night before and even during the day. I, you know, made a reckless decision to try to free myself and ended up riding out into I don't know what, where I thought I was going. It took me to the deep, you know, to the wolf's lair and, and into the unknown. Was there a point where you just thought, you know, you know, this could be it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it, it came probably on, on the seventh night. Uh, I, it was basically a, a, a time, and I'll read it today, a passage in my book. It's about, you know, the time when a man came to the end of himself. And there was a time where I couldn't even climb out of my hole. Um, I had lost the physical endurance and yet even to summon the will to pull myself up and out and you know I could clearly see my destination but for me it looked like it was 20 miles and uh, you know it was it was about me coming to the end of myself you know it was not only was I fighting mother nature at her meanest uh, I was being you know tormented with uh, delirium and hallucinations and uh, loneliness and exposure and, and altitude sickness frostbite and hyperthermia it, you know all those conditions just uh, after those many nights it, it, you know it stripped me of and sapped me of my strength so much that you know, I ended up laying in the same spot for the, for the sixth and seventh night, uh, unmoving. Uh, tell us a little bit about your book. The book's broken up in three parts. We've been getting just great feedback. Uh, it's got something for everybody. If there's somebody that's having any kind of battle or addiction with any kind of substance, I don't care what it is, it'll help you. That's treated in the first part of the book. It was, it, I talk about the person that I was never intended to be. Um, I became a loner as people are never exacting to your standards and um, they're so unpredictable that uh, they were the first to go. So I became a loner, I became a drug addict and uh, I led a very selfish life pushing my limits until I, you know, again had to climb myself out of hell one inch at a time. From there you'll find an, a compelling eight day survival story and then what happens to a man who's made his living and his, has done everything with athletic prowess and now faced with that two tests, losing his feet, faced to four walls and, and uh, you know, confronted with four, reduced to four walls in a hospital room and now confronted with that ultimate test is what it takes to find yourself out of that darkness and after so many lies to begin to tell the truth and live again. Is there anything you wanted to ask, Bruce? Yeah, um, you, you played here, correct? Yeah, I played at Northern from 86 through 90. Was there any kind of lessons that you really picked up from being a wildcat that you still have to this day? A absolutely, and what you'll hear tonight is what was it for me and how did I do it? It was you. It was NMU. And I remember back to Coach Conley and Coach Kyle and, and what they ingrained in me each and every game was that hard-assed attitude and uh, to never quit that you'll always win. I'll never forget a series that we got swept at Tech. We played lousy. And we're arriving Sunday morning about 1.30 in the morning and it's five degrees, our gear is frozen and we hear, put it on, don't hang it up. And it would be that ingrained mental focus that carried me over the hump of when I peeled the skin from my feet that I knew that now I had to summon the resolve to get the hell out of there.